Broken Word Wise, where we delve deeply into the Word of God, discover what it means, and how to apply it to our lives. Today we're continuing in a little bit of the basics of the faith, and a scripture that may not be as famous or familiar, and a concept that I think we Christians undervalue and don't remember enough. It's the reality of living in freedom in Christ, and what that really means, and what should we use that freedom for. We talk about this as we're saved by grace, and We've been forgiven for our sins, and we understand that in God's view, He looks at us through the lens of Jesus Christ and sees us as forgiven and free, and that free part is really essential, and it's really a delight of the Christian life. There's an old cheesy worship song from the 1990s that Brian loves called, We Celebrate Your Victory, and it talks about this freedom that we have in Christ, that it was for freedom that Christ set us free, no longer to be subject from the yoke of slavery. And it talks about how we should revel in this reality and celebrate this reality. And though it's a cheesy worship song from long ago, it still has a truth that I think carries us forward. And the freedom that we have in Christ needs to be something we remember every day and something we don't take for granted, but also that we understand how we are to use that freedom and how we are to live according to what the gospel calls us to live and what the Bible calls us to live And so the book of Galatians has a lot about freedom. Paul is addressing people who had lived under the restrictions of the law and the burden of the law, the Old Testament law. And he's addressing believers that are now set free from that burden, but are needing to understand that they have responsibilities as well as rights in this new freedom we have in Christ. So the verses are just a couple verses out of Galatians 5. It's Galatians 5, 13 and 14. So follow along with us as we read from the book of Galatians. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. As always, context is key, and Paul has been teaching throughout the book of Galatians about the differences of the old covenant under the law and the new covenant under grace and understanding the differences and how essential it is to live in this new reality of the new covenant that we live in grace, and that grace has given us great freedom. Chapter 5 specifically, Paul addresses the the idea that you could become a Christian and receive that grace and be saved by that grace and somehow then choose to put yourself under obligation and burden again. And he's, he's kind of railing against that. And he's saying, no, no, enjoy this freedom, revel in this freedom, and then use this freedom for very important new realities, to live a different life, to live out what Jesus called us to do, which was to love one another. And it almost connects back to Jesus saying in the Gospel of John that a new commandment he gives, that we are to love one another as Jesus loved us. And that's really the calling for believers, regardless of where we are, is to love. And that's what this verse says. Paul says, brothers and sisters, first of all, he's reminding us that we're connected as a family, that this family of faith is a, a reality that's pretty important. We're to help each other, to, to encourage each other, to spur one another on in this idea of freedom. And he's saying, you're called to freedom. This new reality in Christ is a calling. You've been given a gift of grace and salvation, and it's not something to take lightly. It's not something to forget about. No, you're to live into this freedom and lean into this freedom. You're called to live in the freedom that Christ has given you and to really enjoy that and understand that you're free from the condemnation of of your sin. You need to remember that every single day, that God is for you, not against you. That what the scripture teaches is that if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation and that you stand forgiven and free. And then you take that freedom and you appreciate it, you thank God for it, and then you use it each and every day. And if you notice what Paul does, he's basically tying that freedom very closely to the realities of living out the Christian life each and every day by loving others, by loving others. And notice what it says. You're to use this freedom not for your own, your own good and your own privileges. I think that's so often what non-believers think, is they think it's too good to be true, that this grace idea is just too good to be true, which honestly it is, but we are to live out this grace and not fall back into a license to sin. Never does the scripture encourage us to treat grace lightly and to abuse grace. We're not given a a license to sin just because we're forgiven and free. And we're not to use that freedom just for gratifying our own selfish desires. Paul says it pretty clearly there, doesn't he? That you're not supposed to use this freedom to gratify or please your sin nature. 
Each and every one of us, though we are forgiven and free, and though God views us as his beloved children, we still have that sin nature present in us that wants to do wrong. And Paul's saying, don't give in to that. Don't use your freedom for those purposes. Don't feed that sin nature just because you live in freedom now. No, you're to live that, that freedom out by following Jesus' example and loving your neighbor as yourself. And notice what he calls us to do. Brothers and sisters, once again, we do this together. Once again, remembering this is freedom, not obligation. You're not, you don't have to do this. It's nothing about your salvation. This is not a works-oriented reality. This is in response to the grace you've been given, the freedom in which you live, the salvation you've, you've been given in grace. In response to all of that, you live to love one another, to love your neighbors as yourself. And notice what he says, serve, serve. That's a key word there, isn't it? You're to use this freedom to serve others. Not serve yourself, but serve others. And the way you do that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus talked about the greatest commandments, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. That's actually quoting Deuteronomy, verse, verse uh, chapter 5. And he's also then going on to the second commandment, which is like it, which is love your neighbor as yourself. That's quoting Leviticus 19.18. So these are not new concepts. He's just applying them in a new way. And he's saying this is not out of obligation or duty or religious obligation. No, it's out of freedom. And you're to use that freedom to serve others around you. And let that love be what distinguishes us. Let that love and service to others, including others that may not be part of your church family, Maybe your neighbors actually on your street or your neighbors in your local venue, maybe coworkers, maybe all sorts of folks, just being willing to look around and serve those around you and making a difference with the power that God gives you and the freedom that God gives you. Not to live for yourself, but to live for God. That's what it's all about. So Christians today, take a moment to remember that freedom, that you're not under the law, that you're not under, under any religious obligations or any have-tos or, or musts in that sense. I think we sometimes forget that. So appreciate the freedom in which we, we live. Rejoice in that, revel in that, celebrate that, and then recommit yourself today to looking for those divine appointments that God has set for you, those, those people who may cross your paths, who you can serve, you can love, you can make a little difference in their day. Maybe in tiny little ways, at least what you would think is tiny, but sometimes God works through those little tiny efforts that we make to serve and love others, and they can become significant moments in that person's life and maybe even in your life. So use your freedom to serve, to love your neighbor as yourself. And as we journey on together, encourage each other in this, help each other in this, and know that we're in this together as we all want to live out the freedom that we have in Christ. And remember, this is what comes from the Word of God. And as we all travel on together, we become more word-wise. Thanks for joining us.